How's it going everyone? I am Jeremy and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to look at how to make a dynamic projectile system in Construct and then convert it to Game Maker. So I'm recording this a little bit differently with my audio and video separate to try to enhance my audio levels. Let me know in the comments if you like it better this way. Uh, but that is me narrating over the video versus me doing the video and saying things at the same time. So the video is going to go a little faster than usual, but I'm going to explain it starting now. So all I've done so far is make two sprites. One's a player sprite that's 16 by 16, and the other is a ground sprite that is 250, I think, by 250. It doesn't really matter what the ground sprite is. The player sprite has the platform behavior, and the ground sprite has the solid behavior. And now I'm just changing the settings. The two settings I change the most frequently are max speed and, and jump strength. Change the max speed to like 150 and then the jump strength to 250. And then I always turn off the default controls because I like to program them myself. Plus since I'm a righty, I always like using W, A, and D uh, for keyboard controls when it comes to a platform and then use my mouse to control any weapons that we might have. And in this particular case, we're making a weapon system. So right now I'm just setting up that system Fairly straightforward, you've seen me do it in Construct thousands of times where we just simulate the control for the platform for moving left and right, and copy and paste by control and then dragging, which is a nice quick way to do that in Construct if you haven't been doing it that way. And really what I want to do is just show you a very bare bones system. This is not meant to be the best system ever. Uh, in fact, my other dynamic projectile system in Construct is more in advanced than this, but this is meant to just give you a very quick uh, and dirty understanding of how to do this. Real quick, before we continue the video, I want to make sure that you are signed up for weeklypowerup.com, especially for this weekend. Make sure you go to the website right now so you don't miss out. In addition to the weekly tutorials, videos, and challenges that I'm sending out, you can also get this projectile system for Construct 3 and GameMaker, plus get invited to the new Discord server. All I need is your email, and then hit I'm ready for battle, and you can join us, and again, you don't want to miss out this weekend for what's to come. Now back to the video. So I needed to make a bullet sprite, uh, and I was actually having trouble with this ellipse tool in Construct 3. I haven't really used the ellipse tool too much. I'm used to using just a paintbrush. So... I tried doing this a couple times and then it didn't really come out that great and then I finally found one circle that I liked a, little, a bit more. Uh, and this becomes my bullet sprite, which then gets the bullet behavior. Now this behavior is important because it'll give this object speed and then we could later use that speed and manipulate it to do other things. And then I put in a text box so I know what weapon we're switching between. And this whole entire system is controlled via one variable. Doesn't matter if this is an instance variable or not, it's controlled by a weapon variable. I made it global in this case, just so you could see it. Uh, and then we also need the mouse object for this. We have to bring all of them in, the keyboard and the mouse. And then what we need to do is we need our triggers. So in this case, our trigger is when we're holding down the left button and when we're clicking the left button. And when we're holding it down, that's when we're firing an automatic weapon. And when we're clicking it, that's when we're firing a manual-based weapon, something that you only get one shot, uh, and then that's it. Those are the bullets that fire, whether then you get, you get the idea. So now all I'm doing is comparing it. So uh, right now, weapon equals zero. We're going to change that to one, which means that we start off with weapon equals one, uh, meaning on left button click, so our manual weapon, like our pistol, and then I'm just quickly putting in a debug um, for which weapon we're using. So it's going to say current weapon and weapon. It's funny how much faster I can go when I'm not talking and doing it at the exact same time. So again, let me know in the comments if you like it this way. It might be too fast, but hopefully my narration can help you keep up. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go system create object. And then very simply, we're just going to create it at our player X and Y. Uh, that way the bullet just kind of spawns right in front of us and then we'll handle we'll use the bullet behavior uh, Or no, actually we just set the angle. We're just gonna set this angle of the object We don't even need to use uh, anything with the bullet behavior at the moment. We're just gonna set the Angle of the object to equal wherever our mouse X and Y position is when it's clicked Now this is the most interesting part in this video because we're actually doing a little bit extra for the bullet movement here where we're gonna add a random amount, so zero to eight, and then subtract six. So it's gonna be randomized every single time, and that's gonna create this nice little wavy effect when we click. And I realized right here that the yellow doesn't show up that well. 
So I changed the color here uh, just so we can see it. And I actually ended up liking the way this looked much better. Actually, not that. You'll see in a second. Yeah, that looked much better. And it'll show the waviness a lot better too once we swap weapons to the automatic weapon. I guess you could call it machine gun in this one. Uh, so the way we do that is very hacky, very simple. What we're going to do is we're going to compare two values. We're going to compare whatever the weapon variable equals, which right now it equals one. And if it's greater than two, since we only have two weapons, then we're going to set it back to one. Now, to enhance this system, you can just put that number, uh, the number two weapon is greater than two. You can put that into its own variable, like maximum weapons. And really what you'd want to do is put all this stuff in an array. But for sake of argument, I just wanted to show you this very quick and easy way to get up and running with the projectile system. So once it's greater than two, we set it back to one. And then all we need to do is when we press space, we need to add one to the weapon uh, variable. So when we hit space right there, that goes to two. And then it uses our held down trigger. And then we have our machine gun. And you'll notice that little bit of random waviness at the end there, which is really, really neat because that's going to actually create this. I don't know. It's just going to create less of a straight line and boring type of bullet. Now, this is some bullet cleanup stuff that I'm doing. When the bullet's created, I want to move it to the bottom of the layer so it goes behind the player. And when it's outside the layout, I want it to be destroyed. Uh, not really that important to this example, but I wanted to put that in there anyway. And that's really it. Once you hit space, it just goes back to one, which is back to our pistol. And then hit, there's our pistol. And then you hit space again, and it goes back to our machine gun. Now we're going to hop into Game Maker. We're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to make a player sprite. This sprite is going to be 16 by 24. And we're going to origin, put the origin point to the middle, color it in. Now the similarities between Game Maker and Construct in this particular setting are there. They're very, very similar. The only two differences you'll see are with drawing to the GUI and the way we actually fire the bullet. So I'm going to draw the bullet here. And I already know that I did not draw the best bullet I could have possibly drawn. But I did realize that we made the other one red, so we'll make this one red as well. And we're going to make two corresponding objects for both our player and our bullet. Now, the bullet object actually doesn't need to do anything because we're going to handle everything in the player object. So that does keep the code a bit more compact. We're going to assign the bullet object just the sprite, and that's it. Same thing for our player, but our player is going to have three events, a create event, a step event, and a draw GUI. The create event will happen when the player is created. So in this case, we're going to create two variables, our speed and our weapon, just like we did in construct. The only thing with the speed variable is we have to manually make our character move, whereas in construct, we had the platformer behavior do that for us. So we're going to simply say if we press the W key, I'm going to select it and hit control D to duplicate it. Uh, if we hit the A key or the D key, we're going to move left and right. And it's backwards in Game Maker. To move up, we're going to subtract from the Y. To move left is actually pretty normal. We're going to subtract. And then to move right, we're going to add. And speed again equals 3. So then what we're going to do is we're going to need our triggers, just like we had in Construct. We're going to see if mouse check button pressed MB left. This is going to be for our manual weapon. And we're going to take out the pressed for if we're holding it down or our automatic weapon. So let's just mark those off. Now we're just going to do the exact same comparison statement that we did in construct. We're going to say if weapon equals one, then we're going to have the code to fire the pistol. If our weapon equals two, then we're going to fire our machine gun. So now all we need is the bullet code. Now this is where the difference comes in. We're not just going to create the object uh, and give it a bullet behavior. We don't have that. So we're going to use what's called a with statement. The with statement is actually very important because what we can do is we can say with this next line in this, in this particular example, we're saying with instance create depth. With the instance that we create, then do this to that instance. That's what the with statement does. It's specific to game maker language and it's very great. So what we're going to do to that instance, that bullet object that we just created, is we're going to use a function called motion add, which takes a direction and a speed. The direction we're going to plug in is a point direction, which is going to actually point us to where our mouse X and mouse Y are. This is like setting our angle in construct. Then 
we're going to actually plug in the speed of our bullet. At the start here, I actually forgot to put in the speed and I just did the randomization. So I'm gonna come back to that later and add a number to randomize that by. But then I'm just gonna copy and paste that code and put it right into our machine gun. These are gonna act differently because one trigger is being held down and one is being pressed. I tried zooming in, but it looked a little weird. But now we're gonna swap our weapons. When we hit space, we're just gonna add one to our weapon variable to make it two. So if it's greater than two, if we hit space again, it'll go back to one, just like so. This is the very hacky way of doing it, but it works. So finally, we're gonna actually draw out which, uh, we're gonna draw out the weapon variable to the game. And unlike, unlike in Construct with making a text box, we actually have an event for that called draw GUI. So all I'm doing is drawing it at 20 pixels down on the Y axis, and then I'm making the text current weapon plus the converted integer of weapon to tell me if it's one or two, one being a manual weapon and two being the press weapon. And now I can actually set up our layout or our room. I need to drag in the player object and that's really all I need. And then I can hit play. Now you're gonna notice that I immediately realized that I forgot to put in the speed variable properly, but this is what happens. It's just, we're gonna get a bunch of random speeds uh, on the bullet object, but our swapping works. And the reason why I'm using the motion add function is because it actually gives us literally motion add. Whatever this speed is, it's going to increment that speed over time. So every pixel per step, it's going to actually keep adding that. It's really good if you use a lower number and that's where the randomization comes in. Not only is it gonna fluctuate our, our angle, but it's actually going to increment over time and you're gonna see that it's gonna give this bullet some kind of heavier feel to it at times. It's where it's just like, oh, I'm actually firing a bullet. So I'm swapping between this back and forth. It's a little bit different from Construct, but it's the exact same system. Now, we're gonna go into more detail in this in a future video as to how we can actually make these systems a bit more functional with better bullet behaviors, but I really hope you enjoyed this uh, look at Construct Dynamic Projectiles to GameMaker Dynamic Projectiles. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Again, please come join me this weekend on weeklypowerup.com. Make sure you are signed up right now. If you haven't already, there's a link in the description and leave a comment below and let me know what you thought of this video and how you like the audio split up. It was definitely a bit different. I'm gonna keep trying to tweak the sound until it's better. But until then, I look forward to seeing you this weekend on weeklypowerup.com and I'll see you in the next one.